Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today's video is going to be all about how we can create a simple object-oriented program. In this particular case, we're starting off with this UML diagram here that has three classes. It has a room class, a room tester class, a player class, but it's missing quite a few of the pieces of each of these classes and we're going to add those in as we go. Now obviously it's a good idea to start with the design in mind before you're creating, but quite often you're in a situation where you have some idea of what you want, but you need to go back and improve other things. As you get more experience with this, your initial diagrams will start out a bit more robust, but Hopefully right now you're noticing some of the things that are missing and as we start coding you'll notice some of the things that are missing and we'll clean up our UML diagrams. The more you do that then the easier it'll be to create a full flesh design before you start coding. So in this case you might notice that right away there's something we're missing. If we have a room class and a room tester and we have a player class, we're probably going to need to have a player tester class. And then the other thing we're missing is our actual main program. So rooms are going to be, room is a class that we're going to be able to instantiate objects, but um, what are we going to actually be able to do all of these things? Where are we going to be creating them and having our player be able to move from room to room? So the player tester class, oops, the player tester class will have a player of type player. And I'm not sure what functions we'll write in there yet, but we will do some test driven development. So the only other class that we're going to need is going to be our main class. Sorry, IntelliJ is just loading up on my computer here. Okay, so I'm going to grab another. And this is going to be my game class. And my game class is also going to have a player of type player and it's going to have multiple rooms. So depending on the story that you've invented, you're going to need a different set of rooms. In this case, we're going to go a little bit clue-esque. So we're going to have a library of type room. Uh, we're going to have a ball, oops, sorry, ballroom of type room, we're going to have a study oops, of type room, and the whole goal here is that you're just going to be able to move around the map. So we're going to look at how we're going to create these different pieces of this object-oriented class. So you might want to create a map class if that is your thing, um, but I'm just going to do all of the movement in the main game class. Uh, at this stage, it's a pretty small thing, so I think that will be fine, but you might find it easier to create a map class to be able to actually control all your gameplay. So I have IntelliJ open, and I'm going to actually start creating those classes we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and first create my room class, because I know that that's a, that's a class I have a little bit more sussed out the idea of what I want to do. Sorry. My Surface str is struggling to run IntelliJ and Screencast. Well, maybe I can take a snipping and close Chrome. Okay, so as you can see, I have IntelliJ open here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating that room class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new Java class called room. And at the same time I create that, because we're doing test-driven development, I'm going to go ahead and create a room tester class as well. Okay, so in the room class, we know that we're going to be creating room objects, so we're definitely going to need to have a public room having the same name as the class, so that's a constructor. Um, we also know if we look at our UML diagram, which I'll just pull up here, that we're going to have three different data members, the name, the description, and the connect a list of connected rooms. So we're going to have a name, 
we're going to have a description. Those are both strings. And just real quickly here, I'm going to go over. Um, name and description are both visible only really to this class. We don't want to, we want to keep that encapsulation and then abstraction. We don't want other classes to be able to access these directly. So we're going to make these private data members. So private string and private string description. I'm also going to make the array list a private string. Sorry, it's not going to be of type string. It's going to store rooms. Connected rooms. Also might want to be able to set the description. So I'm going to overload this constructor, create a second constructor with the exact same name but this constructor is going to have a different set of parameters. It is going to take in a room name, but it's also going to take in a room description. And again, I'm going to set name equal to room name and description equal to room description. Now, as a quick note here, you can actually have your constructors call each other. So for example, if we call the room constructor that has only the name and not the description, instead of setting name equal to room name, what we can do here is we can call the room descriptor and pass it name and a blank. But we're not gonna do that because it's gonna confuse people. So what we're gonna do, sorry, let me just go back to where we have the name. We're also gonna need to make sure that we initialize this array list here inside our constructor. So right when we construct our object, we initialize our array list. So to do that, we're gonna call it by name. So connected room equals new array list. The type for the array list is room. And one of the nice things about using a dynamic data structure such as an array list is that we don't have to set how many elements are going to be in it. We can just create the object itself. So now we have a room description, um, new array list. I'm going to go ahead and set description um, just to an empty string here so that we don't get any null pointer exceptions later. Okay, so we have two constructors for our room class and we can create rooms that have a name or rooms that have a description. We're also going to want to have our getters and setters for each of these values. So we're going to start with just the simple getters and setters for room name and room description. So we're going to have, these are going to be accessible to other classes. So public string get name is simply going to return the name and public string get description is simply going to return the description. Let me go ahead and fix name here. I will mess that up when I try to call it. Okay, so we can create a room. We can get the name. We can get the description. So let's go ahead and test that. We're going to go to our room tester class. And in our room tester class for now, I'm just going to write a public static void main Oops, as we always do. So I'm just gonna leave this one with a standard main method for testing purposes. In it, I'm gonna create a room and I'm gonna use the constructor where I just pass a name. So in this case, I'm gonna create a library. And then to test that, I'm gonna write some tests. So I'm gonna use just printing to the console to test some of this out. So system.out.println, and I'm going to call, oops, room.getName. And as you know, with my test classes, I like to be as clear as possible. So I'm going to add a string to the front of this that says test name. Name should be lie oops 
library and then run that test. I'm going to copy that because I don't want to rewrite it. And we're going to test description. And we're going to do description should be blank. We're going to make sure we're getting the description here. Okay. Did I spell description wrong? So what we've done is we've created a room object with the first constructor. So we're going to go test the name only constructor. Then I'm going to run this same code, but this time I'm going to test that other constructor we built. So this room is going to be room two. We're going to call it study. You can put whatever you wanted there. It's just for this. Test name and description. And we're going to make sure that we're getting the name and the description from room two. We're going to update our test so that one should be study. Description should be a room with a desk. So I'm just updating this. So when we do create that room object, we are now calling the one that takes both a name and a description. And when we run this code, what we're going to find is that it should run both test cases, print out test name only constructor, and hopefully we will get library and then blank, and then it'll print name and description only constructor, and then name will be study and description will be a room with a desk. This is still building. Nope, my Surface is really struggling to run IntelliJ and Screencast-O-Matic right now to test. Um, so essentially making this video is taking up a lot of processing power, so I'm going to have to find a better solution for these videos. Okay, so in fact, our test has run, and it looks like everything is correct. So I'm seeing both the name library, blank description, and then the study, blank description. It's definitely not throwing any errors, which is always a concern when we write new code. So good news all around here. And that's essentially how we're going to use a tester class to test a class that we build. So as we add functionality to Room, even though we have no other part of our game written, we're going through and we're able to test all the functionality we build into Room. Now, once we start adding the ability to connect to Rooms and that sort of thing, we are going to be able to test that in Room Tester as well. So in that case, it's going to get a little bit more complex. Obviously, at this point, this is a pretty simple structure, although we did overload that constructor, and we did add in an array list and then initialize that array list. So we haven't tested it at all, but we did create it. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, I will go over how we can start building the player and then how we can create, or actually, we'll just do rooms connected together.